What's up, Buckeyes fans? Did we see enough so far in the recruiting and the transfer portal to help us have confidence in the offensive line for the Buckeyes football team going into 2024? That is the discussion we'll be having today. This is Scarlet and Great here on YouTube. This is a, is a, a platform by Buckeyes fans, for Buckeyes fans. We're going to be the sounding board for you guys. And in this offseason, our goal is to provide more content as it comes out. But the information we're going to be sharing with you guys is nothing that you haven't heard before or seen. If you're paying attention to anything Buckeyes football related, we will give our insight and our own opinions. We'll break it down. However, we want to lead the discussion for you guys. So if you jump onto this channel, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and just join the discussion. We would love to chat with you guys. I personally love talking to Buckeyes fans. I'm all the way over in Boise, Idaho, across the country. I want to know where you guys are from and chat with the rest of Buckeye Nation. It's always fun for me to chat with people from all across, even if we disagree on different topics uh, relating to the football program. But I do love to chat with you guys and see where you're at, so I'll continue to lead this, this discussion. My name is Shane Larson, also known as the Game Time Guru. That is actually the name of my own show I've been doing for seven years. Been I'm going into year eight right now. I'm doing my own podcast. I've been doing that for a long time. Feel free to follow me over there if you'd like, but right now we're talking Buckeyes football. I'm just one of the co-founders here on the channel, okay? Alongside Corey and Johnny, you'll hear from either one of us at any time. Uh, we're going to be leading these discussions and having this fun conversation with the rest of you guys. But in the last video, I talked about Will Howard, okay, coming over from Kansas State. We talked about the pros and the cons of him being, you know, potentially the starting quarterback. Is he or is he not the new sheriff in town? I would love for you guys to check it out if you haven't, but if you listen to the video, Got some insight from some of you guys. We were talking about him. It's it's exciting news to see somebody who can use their legs to get moving. He has 300 plus yards rushing, nine touchdowns uh, this last season for Kansas State. So somebody that can move. But here's my point of even bringing up the last video. All of it's completely irrelevant if we don't have an offensive line. Okay, I don't care if Lamar Jackson is behind there. I don't care who it is. Whatever quarterback you have, it's not going to help you. It Justin Fields, it wouldn't have helped him if, if you don't have an offensive line. And we have some big time, big time necessities here on the offensive line. Uh, it's it's easy to say it's arguably one of the worst um, performances we've seen, right? In Buckeyes history, at least recently, um, as elite as our team has been personnel wise, the offensive line has been absolutely atrocious. It's It's just one of those things that I just can't, wrap my head around because there's no progression, right? So you have to imagine that Justin Fry's on the hot seat, right? I don't want to talk about another man's job and what they're doing because I don't get to see the day-to-day. -day. I don't get to be behind the scenes and seeing what's going on. But I would have to imagine that he's at least feeling the pressure because I look at this as a progression, right? These are This is collegiate athletics, right? You're not expecting them to just come firing off on, on all cylinders from snap one of the season, right? In collegiate athletics, it's a little different than the pros. The pros, you really want to start firing off pretty quickly, um, and it's a different system. These guys are at the professional level, but the, at the college athletics level, you have to have patience with the progression of the system, right? That's why I think people are a little bit more lenient with Knowles and the defense, because we saw that progression with the defense. We saw the improvement. We, we were patient with it because we could see the improvement. I cannot say, and I would argue that we cannot say that same exact thing for the offensive line. Thus, I would imagine Justin Fry is feeling the pressure. Let me know what you guys think, right? But we got some news. I mean, there's there's a little bit of hope coming for Ohio State, right? With the news of Seth McLaughlin coming from Alabama, right? So he was their starting center. And after, you know, I actually... I, I'm not sitting here watching film of offensive linemen all day long. So I can't say, oh, man, I watched him his whole career. He was great. Okay. And if you do, power to you. But I don't think many of us are sitting here watching film of the offensive linemen. However, as soon as he announced his commitment to Ohio State, hitting the transfer uh, transfer portal and coming back over here, I went and I watched some of his stuff. You know, he's a six foot four, 300 pounder starting at center. So an interior lineman. And he is good. Footwork, good. Understanding of the game, good. And let me tell you something. What I noticed was that he was playing with a quarterback that, you know, their quarterback situation was interesting. You know, at least we had some consistency in the sense of the quarterback was the quarterback. 
for the majority of the season at Ohio State. We knew in 2023 that McCord was going to be there. There's some consistency there, which is helpful. I mean, Alabama had their problems at the quarterback position too. He was consistent as an offensive lineman, regardless of who was behind him, right? What I'm really impressed with is his run blocking against Georgia. He did a really, really good job. Uh, he's strong and he's got some good technique and he's got some power. Guys, he's exactly what we need. He's a dog, dude. He'll come in there and he's a dog. And above that, he has the experience that I think we're lacking at the offensive line. Now, obviously, I I, I was quoted in saying it before the season when I was talking to Johnny as well as Corey here on the show. The offensive line, I was giving them a little bit of leniency for the first little bit. Like it's it's hard. You have to understand each other's tendencies. You've got to understand who's got who. You got to be able to pass off defenders over here if they're doing any kind of stunting anything um along with just being very technically sound for the one-on-ones that you have to do and just be able to take your your guy one-on-one head on and i feel like you know i was like maybe with the experience the offensive line will improve but i don't feel like they improved at the level that everybody else was improving thus they look really really bad because the rest of the team was improving in different areas And that offensive line just didn't get there. It's that whole concept of like exponential growth, right? Like it's the compound interest effect. Like everybody else is improving week upon week upon week. And so it's just compounded in the offensive line. Maybe they improved, but man, they sure didn't look like they were at the same level. Thus all the way down to the bottom. So I love having McLaughlin come in here for the experience specifically, but I do like the returners. And I I know I'm going to be, hated on for saying this and I would love to hear what you guys have to say, but I I know people won't agree with me, but I am confident in those who are returning with the experience that they have now together. I think that does state something because you can't just bring in a whole new group of guys, even if they're really, really talented and then expect them to fire off on all cylinders. You've got to have guys who have worked together for an extended period of time and understand the in-game situations and each other's tendencies. It's no different than a quarterback stepping in the pocket and trying to throw to these receivers. They've got to have a receiver that they're used to throwing it to. They understand their tendencies on certain situations. The offensive line is the exact same way. Okay. What do I expect from Seth McLaughlin though? He was the center over there. Do we want to move him over to guard? Is he capable of, of doing that? Um, I think so. And I think it would help in pass protection, um, which would be huge. I think he's going to be a massive addition, but leadership and experience are going to be so, so important uh, for us. Uh, this next season. And I think that's what exactly what he's going to have. Plus, you know, he's coming off of a college football playoff uh, appearance. He's coming from a top tier program at Alabama. So he knows hard work. He knows what he's bringing. He's not going to come into Ohio state and act like, and and be shell shocked. He's going to come in here ready to rock and roll and lead this offensive line. That's how powerful just one guy can be. And I feel like that commitment from McLaughlin might save Justin Fry. We, we might get to see that. I, I think Justin Fry needed a guy that, that rhymes. I'm like Dr. Seuss, but he needed a guy that could come in there and lead. And I think you're, you're going to see that right now. Now, if we got a new quarterback in town that gets the starting gig and Will Howard, we're really going to need reps together between all of these guys. These guys need reps together consistently through spring and summer, get into the fall season because we've got, a uh, heck of a conference next year with the additions. Of, um, we got a schedule that's tough. I mean, we're going over to Eugene to play in Oregon early on in the season. Like, I mean, we've got some tough matchups now with the expansion of the conference and with the expansion of the playoff. These games are going to be important, but that's where this big game experience is going to come in handy. And I love the fact that we've got guys, while they're not from the system, the organization right now, this program, They have the experience, and I feel like they can adapt pretty quickly to the program. Now, here's my other question for you guys as we get to the the bottom of this. You know, the offensive line woes, we've talked about it all year. How much of it is actual skill set, and how much of it is coaching, right? I mean, as a basketball coach myself, I coach at the high school level. It's like you're always going to see people who disagree. They're like, well, the kids have the talent, but the coaching just doesn't put them in the right situations. And I'm always of one to say, hey, you can lead a horse to water camp, make him drink, like that whole concept. I've seen that a lot with Ohio State. It's hard for me to blame this on coaching completely because I've seen like super basic concepts, like super basic blitzes and super basic defensive fronts. 
that get through our offensive line. I mean, constantly. So it's hard for me to say that coaching is the problem, right? Or is it? So that's where I give a little bit of grace to Justin Fry. And I would like to see what you guys have to say for it too. But are we excited? Are we not excited? Do you think that the, the addition of McLaughlin is enough to try to, you know, get some other guys getting their eyes over here, seeing what we have? And do you think he has the leadership experience that I was just talking about that can really help rally this team? Because I feel like we have the pieces in place to truly compete next year, not only make the college football playoff, but make a run at the title. And I know we say that every year, but in this era of college football with NIL and the transfer portal and everything, it's extremely difficult to remain consistently at the top. It's very difficult to do so. Okay. Very difficult. But when you start getting a little momentum like this and you get some names over here in different positions, it really starts to shift the momentum in your favor to then remain consistent year after year because people start getting their eyes and start getting that FOMO and they start seeing, oh, what's going on over there? So I feel like it's a good move in the right direction. Would love to hear what you guys have to say. Again, if you guys enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the channel. Let's lead this discussion. Let's talk with the rest of Buckeye Nation. As always, God bless and go Bucks.